Hello world! Welcome to the Molly Plus Knitting Podcast. My name is Molly and this is a podcast about knitting, life, and everything else. Uh, I'm coming to you from Hoboken, New Jersey where I live with some half-alive plants. This one's doing pretty well and so is this one. Not so much that one. Uh, and uh, Hoboken is just right across the waters from New York so super convenient. Uh, the only downside is that there are no yarn stores in Hoboken, New Jersey, but I can tap into the ones in New York anytime, even though I never do. <laughs> and we'll see why. So this is a podcast about discovering things, learning new things, and just doing what you love when you feel like it. And that may or may not be why I have not uploaded in a very long time. Uh, editing videos and making videos as fun as it is just feels a little bit too much like my day job. Uh, my day job is not this creative but needing to sit in front of a computer after work is just not my jam so I haven't made a video in a very long time. But there's a few things that's been inspiring me and I really want to share with you guys. So let's just jump right into this podcast. And as usual, before we embark, please put on your oxygen mask before helping others. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Alrighty. And grab something nice and warm. Maybe something that reminds you of a past life when you were an engineer. My life is not nearly as interesting as it was nowadays. Alright. So I haven't posted in a very long while and uh, there's a lot of FOs to catch you up on. I don't think I'm going to talk about all of them. Uh, some of them are posted on Instagram but not everything because I'm not great at taking photos myself. Uh, just to get us started, let's talk about what you can see on the screen right now. So I'm wearing the Desert Bloom top. Uh, I can't remember who made it but I am, used some cotton linen yarn with it so, for it so it should work very well uh, during the summer. Um, well, it has worked pretty well during the summer and now that it's in the fall, in the chillier weather, it's still working very well for me. Um, and as to what's on here covering my television, because I really don't like seeing the glare uh, back from my lights above back on the screen that I'm uh, recording on basically, and I'm covering the television up with my night shift shawl, which I made extra extra large. Uh, this is Andrea Maori Shaw and I was using the, I can't remember which Noro yarn, but it was a huge ball, like 200 grams, and I had 400 grams of those. So this is an extra large shawl that I've been using very often for the chillier in between weather and for traveling generally. So you could call it a, sh I think someone said shawl blankets are also known as schlankets. So it's been working very well for me. On to the most exciting thing that has happened to me in my entire life. Uh, <laughs> some people may disagree. <laughs> it was the Rhinebeck weekend. I only went for one day. I only went on Sunday. It was a last minute trip with a non-knitting friend. Uh, she's, she was going to come into New York City for some work things and we figured that we could go enjoy ourselves in upstate New York while the leaves are changing color. So we ended up booking a trip in the Catskills, which is a little bit past Rhinebeck. When I looked at the map and I was like, hmm, that's very close to Rhinebeck, New York. Uh, and there's a huge festival and my gracious friend, thank you, Jessica, uh, graciously allowed me to drag her, a non-knitting person, to the New York Wool and, Sheep, Wool and Sheep Festival in Rhinebeck, New York. So where is Rhinebeck, New York? It's about halfway between New York City and Albany. So it's a little bit out there, but like not super out there. Uh, and I think this is a, usually a very small town that doesn't have a lot of traffic except for this particular weekend where the New York Wool and Sheep Festival happens in October. And for the people who don't know, this is a huge festival in which you'll see sheep, vendor, alpacas, uh, spinners, dyers, weavers, knitters, uh, and everyone else who is just there for a good time uh, show up and just hang out. It's a three-day event, I believe. It went from the 14th of October to the 16th of October. I only had a chance to go on a Sunday, which I think is not a bad idea because I heard it was absolutely bonkers every other day uh, between like the pandemic shutting the festival down in uh, 2020 and just like pent-up demand, I guess. Uh, just everybody showed up and had a good time. So I still had a really good time on Sunday and 
my friend, I think, would probably not do it again. But I will absolutely try to go again next year, hopefully all three days, because Hoboken is really not that far away from Rhinebeck, and I can probably figure out a way to get there, maybe by train, or I'll just rent a car like a normal person. See, one of my plans that I was trying to hatch up was like, oh, what if I take a train to Rhinebeck uh, train station using Amtrak and bring my bike there and bike to the festival grounds. But then I realized October is not a uh, very stable season. Some years uh, Rhinebeck is very windy and some years it's raining. I've heard incidents of snow before too, uh, but this weekend it was very very nice there. Uh, I wore a sweater, uh, my Rhinebeck sweater, which if you're not a knitting person, a Rhinebeck sweater is a very big deal. People fuss about which ones to bring and which ones to wear based on the weather patterns. And I just happened to have a very recent FO during the time. So this is my Rhinebeck sweater. Ta-da! Isn't it pretty? I think it is just a little bit too cute for me, but I don't care. I love it. I will wear it a lot, probably. So uh, this was my choice of Rhinebeck sweater, which worked out very nicely because as you can see, uh, this is Suri Alpaca yarn from Farmer's Daughter and um, it's mostly kind of like see-through so it's as long as it's not super cold or super windy it'll keep you warm, it'll keep you fresh uh, so I think it was the perfect weather and I think on Sunday at some point it got a little bit warmer so I just rolled up my sleeves a little bit and everything was fine so this was the perfect sweater for this Rhinebeck and it also helped uh, Krizel from Chris Knits to identify me because it was so bright and I just posted it on Instagram the day before. And if you're interested, I post occasionally on the Instagram. It's also called Molly Plus Knitting, so feel free to find me there. And this sweater is uh, the Plumtis, Plumetis, I don't know how to say it. It's from uh, Pom Pom Magazine from uh, the spring issue of this year. And the fun thing was I wore this sweater the entire day and I walked to the Pom Pom uh, booth and was just kind of perusing and like the people working there obviously recognized the sweater I think it's just super cute super cute super cool to just say hi to people who are really into knitting um, yeah so I said hi to Krizel um, and also Kristen from Wool and Vine um, I think that's it I felt too shy to say hi to Gigi made it like there were so many people around her but I saw her it was really cool um, anyways, about the sweater, I haven't finished talking yet. Uh, so this is Suri Alpaca yarn paired with uh, just some sock yarn. I got both of these yarn from the Wool Walk. Uh, this yarn is uh, Cedar House sock yarn I got in 2021. Uh, and this yarn I got this year and it is uh, Farmer's Daughter Suri Alpaca yarn. Uh, and the colorway is called Melted Butter and this colorway for the solid part is called Calico Corn so this is my popcorn sweater. Um, it is like just super cute with the collar but I actually prefer wearing it like from the back side and front more. I don't know it just feels more me. So there's this little keyhole detail with a button I just grabbed whatever I have in my stash and put it on. And I feel like this looks more like me than this. I don't know, this just looks too, um, this side just looks too... I'm a good kid, <laughs> I think. This just looks too much like I'm a good kid. And this side is like, I'm a, I'm a good kid, but riskier. There's like a keyhole, you can see my chest. Parts of my chest. Not, not like super deep, but like, you can, you can see skin. Very risque. Um, so yeah, so this is what I wore to Rhinebeck. And obviously uh, for a trip to a wool and sheep festival, I will not leave empty handed. So, so I dropped some cash. That's why we work. It's called turning money into a form that you love, I think. Um, it's like conservation of energy in which like it doesn't the money never goes away completely anyways you do you, okay it's like conservation of energy but with money it's just 
the money never really goes away it just changes form it just changes into a form that you love and that's why it's totally okay for me to have a shitload of yarn sitting around because i love it <laughs> so the first thing that i want to share with you that i got from rhinebeck is Jin -jin. what is this uh this is a make your own sheep kit this is from english man bay handmade and basically you take this sheep form and the wool outside of it and then you just felt it right onto the sheep form and because i have no self-control i bought two because they need a friend um and i can't wait to start stabbing the sheep to make them form them into little sheep friends so yeah i had no self-control i got two it's super cute and uh they also have like little add-ons to the sheep kit there were like unicorn horns they have alpacas there's something of a reference to doctor who but i don't think i really understand it i thought i'm a nerd but apparently i'm not that nerdy <laughs> um and uh they got horns they got like little rocking rails and wheels if you want to add them on which is really cool but i just like the basic one uh oh and they they also have an option to change the head so that it goes from upright to grazing it's just a super cute booth and they have like multiple colors of sheep like this one is like a little bit more multi colored oh it's reflecting off the lights from everywhere else um and this one's just a white one. I'm not very into like the super, super colorful ones. I think it's just too weird. The multi, this is like as far down the weirdness path that I'm willing to go um, for my sheep. So can't wait to dig into these kits. I don't know when I'm going to do it. Probably one day when I'm really stressed and I'm like really needed to stab something. So <laughs> can't wait. Um, okay. Now I also stopped by a few other booths. Uh, I got this yarn uh, from Utopia BFF B BFL BFF. Of course, I bought more yarn, so I got this uh, BFF but Utopia BFL BFF yarn. I believe this is yarn from Wisconsin. So one of the big best things about this festival is that people from even around the world. I think I saw some British yarns there. Uh, just coming over and showing off their yarns and I think I was just talking to some I was looking adding at their yarn because I wanted something that's not super wash for my color work sweater that's coming up I'll talk about it later and I was adding at their yarn because they have enough colors that I can potentially pair them into uh, color work I know I don't have to get the same yarn from the same place but for color work but it, I think it makes life a little bit easier so I was eyeing at their yarn and somebody came over and talked about like how he w always he's always wanted to get this yarn from this vendor and how nice it is, which I mean, it's pretty nice. And the funny thing is that for some reason, I feel like I don't see uh, BFL yarn as often, just like 100%. So BFL is blue faced Leicester wool. Um, so the blue faced Leicester is a type of sheep and they have their face is really gray, but uh, some people say it looks blue they have a very long face which I think is kind of funny looking uh, and their the the wool that they produce is known to have a very long staple length so I think I knew about this wool because I wanted to learn spinning which I still kind of do want to learn uh, and the longer staple length would make it a little easier to spin for a newbie but I was looking at this yarn and it's more rustic i think but it was surprisingly soft like it doesn't bother me on my neck so that would definitely work well to just wear generally and also uh with color work sweaters the all non super wash wools work a little bit better because they can mesh together the fibers can mesh together and really make the color work look nice um so i'll talk about the actual a uh, selection of colors that I got a little bit later because I already cast it on the project <laughs> This is the only skein that I haven't winded yet. So I wanted to just show you what it looks like in its original form All right, so that's number one 
And then I also bought this mystery yarn from a mystery vendor. I bought a sweater's quantity worth of yarn for all the yarns that I'm about to talk about. So this mystery wool, I really don't know who made it. Uh, the vendor kind of had just had like a pop-up stall next to uh, some of the barns and marked out that the yarns are, um, I think it's like $5 each earlier in the afternoon and then like as time progressed they marked it down more I showed up when it was 2 for 5 so this is 100% wool don't know which type of wool uh, looks delicious though and it's worsted weight yarn so by the time I showed up uh, it was slim pickings basically so I just picked up like a sweater of quantity worth of this wool yarn for some future project that I want to make, I guess. So this is a very, very dark brown. Um, looks almost, looks black on the, on camera, but it's a very dark brown. And this is a 200 yard skein uh, with 100 grams. I don't know, people seem to prefer using, <laughs> you should be using yardage to describe how much yarn you have, but I don't, like, every skein is different. So I like to use grams more, even though it doesn't tell you much. Uh, you need to know the grams and the uh, weight, I guess, to have a better idea on the yardage. But this is uh, worth the weight, and I have some ideas on what projects that I could potentially use it on, but I don't know yet. So this is a good find. It was two for five, so I think I spent $15, uh, which is six skeins of yarn. So super good deal. Um, in Rhinebeck, which I don't think that always happens because, <laughs> you know, yarn is not cheap. Good material is not cheap. So, yay, thank you, mystery vendor. I have no idea what yarn this is, but I think it's wool, so very exciting. And then finally, um, I also bought this yarn from Fox Hill Farms on Woolen Vine's recommendation. So she made a video before going to Rhinebeck and talked about what she would do a beeline for. So I got this Fox Hill Farm yarn. I'm actually not really sure uh, what yarn this is. I think it says DMK, DKM or something like that. I know it's a DK. It is the expensive. Like you can see the tag, it is not that cheap, uh, but it is just very, very nice yarn. Also very rustic, but doesn't bother me on the skin and it just feels warm. So I'm excited to knit this yarn. I have some ideas on what I'm going to do with it, but we'll talk about that later. And I think that's all that I bought from Ryan Beck, other than the bottle of whiskey, which I will not show you here. Uh, but that will get me through the winter too. Um, so yeah, that's all that I bought from Rhinebeck. I think that shows a little bit of a self-restraint, but like not much. So, uh, and given that I have a lot of yarn in stash, which I probably should do a stash dye, stash dye video at some point, because my stash is getting very interesting in the sense that it's very overflowed. Uh, so that would be an interesting video. Um, the funny thing is that um, I think non-knitting folks don't really understand how big of a stash knitters can have. So when I said uh, when I was in line for the cider donuts, uh, I was talking to some other knitters and my non-knitting friend was with me. Uh, I was saying like, oh, I actually don't have that much yarn. It doesn't even fill a bin. Uh, and when you say a bin in a knitter's context, I think we're all thinking about bins this big like the moving bins, the big ones. I do have like two full bins, but they're the size of uh, this bookcase behind me. So they're about yay big, like they're full, but like it's not a bin worth. So it's not that much yarn. The other knitters I was talking to, they have real houses, like they don't live in New York. Um, and they were just talking about like, oh, they have two full bins and one of them works in a yarn store. And I mean, like that's more but I think I've heard of people having even more yarn than that. And uh, in case you don't know, there is a term for that. There, it's called a uh, stash accumulation beyond life expectancy, uh, stable for short. And thankfully I am nowhere near that, but if I keep buying yarn, I will hit that very soon. Uh, so I have two full bins and some overflow, but it's not like two full small bins, you know, yay big bins, Ikea bins, and some overflow, but it's not ridiculous. 
All right, uh, enough about like acquisitions. Let's talk about finished objects. So I shared one earlier, but I have another one. I actually finished this uh, very shortly. I cast on this project shortly before my Rhinebeck trip. Uh, and I finished it off shortly after the trip. So here it is. I finally made a hat for myself. So I started knitting in 2018 because I lost three hats. I got really annoyed about me losing hats that I made myself a hat. And that's been the hat that I've been wearing all this year, all these years. And I made a number of people very, very nice hats with very, very nice yarn, but I have not made one for myself. So Ta-da! This is my hat! I'm so excited about it. Uh, this is the October hat with the, um, from the Ear of Hats that Kelborn Woolen made. Uh, I'm using the Juniper Moon Farms 14 yarn, which I have used before. Like, just look at how beautiful it is. So this yarn is uh, a chainette construction, and it's just so squishy and so soft. Oh, and the pom-pom I got actually at Rhinebeck. Uh, and uh, I'm a little bit scatterbrained. What else? Uh, oh, and the colorway is Nebula. So I got this yarn in April during the wool walk. Um, I feel like every time I go on like these yarn events, I have like a color palette in mind on what I would want to get during that time. So during the wool walk, uh, I went to Yarnia, and when I was in Yarnia, I was on like a purple, pink, gray color palette so this kind of fits that so i bought a lot of yarn in those colors and during this rhinebeck i have a brown color palette going on i don't know it must be the fall so i got a lot of brown yarns <laughs> sorry oh uh, so this is my latest fo october hat very simple uh, pattern originally i was thinking about making the january hat uh which has a lot of pom-poms not pom-poms bobbles on it and I hated it like I love the look of it but the more I look at it the more I hate it and once I started knitting it I just couldn't get past the bobbles so I went back to a pattern that I knitted before and I really loved and I just made the same thing and it just it was just so fast so like I think I finished this within five days and now I have a very warm hat for the rest of winter and I'm just so happy about this okay uh, in terms of works in progress, uh, I only have two because I just finished that hat, but there is a big one going on right now. I think I have talked about this sweater before. Uh, it's the For Fox Sake sweater from Max the Knitter. And I actually made one for my husband this year. And it took me five, five months, I think. I cast it on around Thanksgiving and then I finished it in March. So, um, to avoid, there, it was a strategic choice because I was trying to avoid the boyfriend curse, of course. Uh, I might have mentioned this in my last video that I uploaded that I got married in February. So in March, I finished the sweater and gifted it to my husband. See, no, no boyfriend curse. He's my husband now. He can't run. Um, <laughs> so... I made that sweater and I used superwash wool for that, superwash yarn for it. And I think I like it. I like how it looks. Um, I actually had to go over the glasses because I, the color choices were not uh, perfect. Um, but the only thing that I noticed is that the superwash wool like really just grows. It grows so much. Uh, in the picture that I took, which I'll put somewhere here, of my husband, it was I was just we were just trying to show how long the sleeve was because I made it to the right sleeve, I washed it, and then it grew. It just grew. And while I was in the uh, in the festival in Rhinebeck, I was talking to some folks, uh, just trying to get some advice, and they really it was the ladies behind me at I should have gotten their names or something. It was the ladies from Maryland behind me. Uh, at the uh, cider donut stall and we're just chatting uh, and they really recommend using uh, natural wool like non super wash wool so that's where the BFL BFF <laughs> such a such a mouthful uh, the BFL BFF yarn went so let me show you uh, I caked them all up and I'll show you the colorways that I got so 
natural. This one I think is called tree bark. You see, oh my gosh, I've made progress. You can see how much smaller this is now. Uh, and hold on, Old English Rose. And finally, the main color is this. I think it's called Fog, I can't remember. So this, this color I showed you earlier, it's got like a bluish tint, which I think would uh, really complement very well with the blue sweater that my husband has. Um, and but look at this colorway this is this is totally neapolitan ice cream uh Krizel pointed out that like Sawater Shaw was using this color combination it's ice cream and I was like oh gosh I already bought the yarn it's 100% ice cream but I love it so this is my progress so far and oh my gosh I forgot I mean I didn't forget this is such a difficult project so this is uh from top to bottom um, and I cast it on yesterday, and I guess this isn't too bad of a progress, but it's like this this much of a sweater, like not a lot. Um, and I forgot how hard this sweater is. You can see here right around this row, it's got all three colors in a row. So I'm trying to do three stranded color work. I mean, I know this is the second time I've done it, but it doesn't make it any less easy, any less hard any more easy there we go and but this time i have a little bit of help i got this norwegian thimble you can put it on your finger uh like so and feed the yarn through each of these hoops to kind of make it separate so it's easier and how i hold the yarn when i'm doing three stranded uh color work is that i'll hold uh the background color on my right hand and two of the contrasting colors on my left hand and just do bold continental and throwing at the same time, which I mean, I can do continental like just knit. I don't know why I can't, the pearls are just not working as well for me. I don't have as much practice, but you know, it's in the round, so I just need a knit, but it's still so slow. And I feel like my hands are cramping a little bit. So I just need to kind of relax. And um, yeah, it's just hard, but I am very excited about the colors that I chose and I'm just excited to be matching my husband. Uh, I kind of have a deadline on this sweater and I think it's very very ambitious. The deadline is December 19th, no 20th, December 20th because I'm going back to Taiwan in December and in most other countries, I believe, you have a wedding photo shoot with just the couples, usually. And in Taiwan, there's a huge bridal industry in which you can just borrow the gowns, they'll, they'll lend it to you, uh, borrow the suits, and for a very fair price, you can uh, find a photographer, um, a makeup artist, and go outside and do, and have like a photo shoot, either outside or inside a booth. and it. The results are usually amazing and I really want to use this chance to have a photo shoot also with matching sweaters with my husband. So now I need to make the sweater. The good news is that, you know, I could always, you know, not weave in the ends or like make it cropped and a short sleeve one. So I just need to power through the color work really. And then I'm just like, I'm halfway through there once I power through the color work. So. I'm on a time constraint, it's going to be ambitious because just to remind you, last time when I made this, it took me five months. It was not easy. Uh, granted, I did work on something in between during those five months, but I would like to work on something in between now because this is so difficult and there's no way I'm going to be working on this during meetings. Okay, now I have another uh, finish, uh, not finish object, work in progress and it's kind of hibernating. Last year, I was very inspired by Engineering Knits uh, bikini party. I think she uh, knitted herself a bathing suit. So uh, around during the summer months, I was thinking I could do the same thing. I could find a vintage pattern on Etsy and knit myself a bathing suit. So I found one, uh, I printed it out. So this is the vintage bathing suit that pattern that I got and I have a nice little swatch uh, right here using La Bia Maze, um yarn and it's just so cute but 
they only have one size on the vintage pattern and I am not that size <laughs> so I need to make adjustments and so far I made like the front panel of this doesn't really look like anything and like it's way too big um so my the front panel of the bottom so it's not working I have to work on it again some at some point but this is hibernating hardcore hibernating I think that's everything that I have uh there is some plans on next projects but it's kind of still nebulous because I'm full force focused on this sweater that is super hard uh, and there's just too many next projects that I want to do one of the things I really want to do in the next few months though is to make a headband for running I've been running uh, fairly consistently I'm not a huge fan of running but I get a little reward when I run when I run to the waterfront in Hoboken I get to see all the skyline of New York City and it's just really beautiful and I want to keep running during the winter months and I would really need a headband so and given that I have an overflowing stash of some leftover yarns I think I should make myself a headband probably with the super wash yarns uh, so I can just toss it in the washer and not feel too bad about it so yeah that's all i have about knitting and um in terms of life uh work is busy which means i'm not getting as much knitting done which is unfortunate um because i would usually just knit during the meetings but now work is getting busier i can't just do that a lot of times i'm multitasking like reading emails so it's not great and given that it's fall, I think I'll be spending more time inside, which means I'll be knitting more. But, you know, a lot of things have opened up. It's a slightly different time from, say, the same time last year. And I just, I just like going outside and exploring again. So I just also haven't been knitting as much <laughs> because of that. Um, yeah, so that's all that I have knitting and life-wise. We'll see how long this podcast end up being. It uh, will be a lot of editing, hopefully not too much. So anyways, thank you again for joining me on this journey. And uh, if you'd like to follow me, feel free to subscribe. Uh, it's free, I guess. Um, I don't post too often, so it's not going to be super annoying, I think. Um, unless you don't like my content, then why are you here? Uh, and feel free to follow me on uh, Instagram as well. I post every now and then nice pictures of my UFO and just like random shenanigans in the stories. Um, you can also find me on Ravelry under the same name. Wow, so on brand. Good job, me. Uh, and uh, that's all. I hope you have a great day and a good however long that I will see you until the next time. So. Good luck on everything and bye!